What's going on? I'm John, and in this writing vlog, I'm going to be outlining every single scene in my epic fantasy novel. It's going to be quite a bit, but there is a good reason why I'm doing this. Well, there's multiple good reasons why I'm doing this. The first reason is that for me, outlining scenes in advance makes my writing process of actually writing the scene so much more efficient. Even if I take any individual scene in a completely different direction, it helps to have that foundation and it makes the process much quicker. I've tried writing scenes from scratch without actually outlining them beforehand, and it slows things down dramatically. And this will become very relevant for a challenge that I'm going to be doing in the very near future with the first draft of this novel. However, that's not the only reason that I want to do this. As you might know, if you've watched the previous videos in this series where I was outlining the novel or where I did the world building, I did the outlining first. So I need to make sure that the outlines that I'm creating are actually congruent with the world building that I've done. So that is what I'm going to be working on now. I'm going to review these character arcs and then I can get into actually outlining every single scene. If you hear a laundry machine out there, I'm sorry about it. There's laundry running right now. Okay, so I've been working on reviewing and updating the first character's arc right now. And it's been taking quite a while so far. Basically, the problem that I've faced is that after doing more world building about the cast system, after figuring out a little bit more details and coming back to what I'd written before, I don't think that it's super realistic the way that he actually got out of his situation. So what I've been doing is updating it instead to actually feel more realistic and I've taken advantage of something that I learned while reading about the history because of the caste system because the people at the lowest rank of the caste system could only work in certain sorts of professions they were able to develop monopolies in those areas so that's kind of what I'm trying to do here I'm having him develop this monopoly in a certain repulsive sort of profession so he's going to be using this to get out of his situation but right now i'm kind of struggling with what save the cat calls the break in the three and then from that point on past the climax i'm trying to figure out a dramatic way that still feels realistic for him to overcome the situation here so i'm almost done with updating his arc but i do still have some changes left to do Okay, so I just finished up with the entire updating of the first character's arc. I already kind of knew that this one was going to be the most difficult, that this one was going to take a decent amount of time, because I did want to completely update, well, first of all, what sort of profession this character was working in, and the method in which he actually escapes from his low position in the cat system. I changed quite a bit, but I'm much more satisfied with how this turned out. And it seems more realistic to me, like this could actually happen. I'm very happy with how this one turned out, but I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to call it a day. I might come back a little bit in the evening. I don't know, we'll see if I have some time. Okay, I'm back, it is the evening, and I'm gonna spend a few minutes here looking through the second character arc a little bit. Really, I have names for these characters at this point, so I might as well call them by their names, but old habits, I guess, Ella's arc. <laughs> and the first guy was Miksa. I don't think there's going to be as many changes to this one because when I was doing the world building, I didn't think of any big changes that I needed to make to it. However, I'm going to read through right now and I guess we'll find out if I actually do need to make some changes or if it's fine the way it is. Okay, so yesterday I kind of forgot to check back in with you. I was just working and then I forgot to film <laughs> again. So I am back for day two right now. So let's just start on this. I was working on character two, Ella's character arc, and just looking through reading, reviewing, and making sure everything corresponds with what I know of the world building, and just making sure that the character arc looks good overall so that I'm actually ready to break down the individual scenes within it. Okay, so I just finished reviewing the entire second character's arc. I keep saying second characters, Ella's arc, and I actually think that it already works as is. So that means that I can move on to the third character's arc, Lucian's arc. Okay, so I just finished reviewing character three, Lucian's arc, 
And I think that one's actually already really well put together. And that's because it was so complex since it was like a mystery. I had to work out all these details in advance. So I think that arc actually makes a lot of sense as it is. So that means I'm actually ready to get started outlining individual scenes from the different characters arcs and actually outlining every single scene in the novel. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through for each character one at a time and I'm going to start from the last scene of that character's arc and work my way all the way back to the first scene. The reason why I like going through it this way is because when you're going in reverse order it makes the chain of events very clear. Think about it this way. After you create that very last scene you need to figure out what would have happened before that in order to get to that last scene and that creates a very clear tie between these two scenes and by working backwards and coming up with this very clear chain of events when the reader's actually reading through in chronological order it will feel very natural and organic for these events to happen one after the other and before i actually get started i want to show you how i'm outlining each one of these scenes individually so let's dive into plotter real quick and look at that okay so since this is my first time writing a multi pov story i was struggling to think of how i'm actually going to do this with the ordering of these different characters but what I realized is that what I'll do in the beginning here is I'll start off with it configured so that I'm looking at things from a scene perspective. And I'll just put the scenes for all the individual characters, you know, in whatever, in the order for those characters. In the future, when I'm working on moving those scenes to become chapters, what I'll do is I'll just stack the scenes for a single chapter. And then I can just have all the stacked scenes to represent the individual chapters for a character and I can weave them together in that manner. So that is what I'm going to be doing, but I don't have to worry about any of that right now. I just kind of got into thinking about that because I was like, wait a second, how am I gonna do that? So as far as what I'm gonna do when I'm actually creating these scenes is I'm going to go in and I'm going to use templates because it just makes it easier. So these proactive and reactive scenes are using a scene structure that I already talked about in a previous video, the scene sequel structure. So I'm just going to be using those and basically it assigns these attributes already in advance the goal conflict and i call it an unexpected outcome but setback is kind of the same thing as far as a sequel scene the reactive scene we have reaction dilemma and decision which are the exact same things that i use i'm just going to be using these templates to create my scenes and then for each scene i'll go in first and i'll add the attributes for the goal the conflict and the setback then after i do that I noticed that it also helps for me at least to go into the description and add a little bit like the beginning, the middle and the end, as well as whatever extra details I want to add there. If there's some other stuff I need to remember, like foreshadowing or something important to add in that scene. So those are the things I'm going to get into filling out for each individual scene. That's what I'm going to get started with right now with Mixa's arc from the last scene all the way back to the first scene. Okay, so another thing that I was just thinking about was the number of scenes that I'm basically going to be giving to each character. I don't really know how long this book is gonna be, to be quite honest. It's probably gonna be pretty long, let's be real. I was thinking that it's going to be 120, 250,000 words, probably, which means that each character gets a minimum of 26 to a maximum of 34 scenes. So using that, I can try to break down these Say the Cat beats into their respective scenes. So what I'm going to do right now is work out the number of scenes that I'm going to be including for each character to hit each of these beats and make sure that the pacing is right, basically. So let's just go into that real quick. I'm going to figure these details out and then I can actually start filling out the scenes for each of the characters. <laughs> Okay, so someone is mowing the lawn outside. Therefore, if you hear a loud noise in the background, it sounds like a lawnmower. That's what that is. So since I think this book will be around 120,000 to 150,000 words, I decided that what I was going to do was each character was going to get 50,000 words basically to work with and dividing those 50,000 words up by 1,500, you get to about 33 scenes per character. So that is what I've come to. I've got 33 scenes. Per character and I'm just working my way back. I've labeled each of these scenes, these 33 scenes, with the name of the beat in Save the Cats so that I know how many scenes I have to get everything that I want to be done in each of these various beats. So I finished the final image and the finale for 
the first character, Mixa. But I still have quite a few scenes left in his character arc, 27 scenes. So I'm going to get to those maybe a little bit later, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. So actually what I'm going to do now is go and do my run, which is not actually a run today, it is cross training. So it's going to be a very long walk. Okay, so I'm back again for the third day of working on this outlining. And yesterday I left off after finishing the finale. I finished the five scenes that are part of that. I also finished the final image slash closing image. So I'm going to be starting with the break into three and then just continuing toward the beginning from there. Okay, so I've already worked through a few of these scenes, the break into three, dark night of the soul scenes, as well as another reactive scene that I'm going to include before the first dark night of the soul scene. Um, but it'll be short enough that it's not like a real full length scene. So that's why I'm kind of just like slipping it in there. I also finished the all is lost as well as some of the bad guys close in scenes. However, I'm running into a little bit of a problem with the way that I had outlined bad guys close in because I just jotted down a few, you know, ideas for what could happen during this part. But these ideas are kind of all over the place and they don't really tie together very easily as you would expect from scenes to go one after the other, you know, like a chain of dominoes, right? So I'm trying to work out right now basically how I'm going to create the actual scenes from these sorts of ideas that I had and that I came up with while I was outlining. Okay, so I was finally able to untangle that whole problem that I was having with the bad guys closing scenes. And now I have finished all the way up to the midpoint, including the midpoint scene. I'm going to continue outlining when I get back. But for now, I'm actually going to go on my run because today my run is pretty long. It's six and a half miles and probably going to get pretty warm. So I want to go out while it's still decently early. I'm going to go out. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come back later and continue with more of this outlining. I really would like to finish Mixa's arc today because that would give me so much progress in this process and then I'd only have two more characters to do this for. Okay, so I did my run, which was quite long. My legs are a little bit tired. I also continued reading Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. It's a very, very dark book. The whole time you're reading it, you have this sense like something bad is going to happen. Anyway, so that was what I was doing before and now I'm going to get back into outlining this story, outlining all these individual scenes. So I left off after the midpoint, so I'm going to work through some of these fun and games scenes. And then I think it'll be pretty easy because the other ones I defined more clearly. The fun and games, obviously there's like various different things that I came up with when I was brainstorming for that one. But for things like the B story, Catalyst, or the break into two, for things like that, I came up with very clear and distinct ideas for what I wanted those scenes to do. So once I get past the fun and games, I think it should be relatively smooth sailing all the way until the beginning, the opening image. So let's just get right into fun and games and let's try to have some fun and games. Okay, so I figured out the content for all of these scenes. I just went through my notes and basically came up with a sort of synopsis for the remaining scenes for character one, Mixa. And now I'm going to get into mapping out the specifics of each of these scenes using the scene sequel framework and the beginning, middle, and end to really get a good idea of what's going to happen in these scenes. Okay, so that took quite a while. In fact, it is already four o'clock and I haven't started my immersion yet, so I need to get to that. But let's talk about what I accomplished here today. Oh yeah, the dog is visiting right now, so those toys on the floor are his. Anyway, <laughs> so I was working on this first character's arc and I got through every single scene in the entire thing. Oh, I'm tired, but I'm ready to move on to doing my immersion. So. I'm going to call it a day for all of this because it has been quite a while already, probably like six hours today. Okay, so I'm about to go into doing a little bit more immersion and what I'm watching today is it's this game that came out actually a little while ago, but it's like a DLC to it. It's Life is Strange, but it's like the prequel basically. And I'm watching this guy play the game basically and you know, do the commentary. 
they have these in English for sure. This is a Japanese version, basically. Oh, and I'm laying on the couch right now. Domo, wai wai to moshimasu. Hondi tsumo Life is Strange no tsuki o yatte ikitai to moimasu. Okay, I am back here for day four, and I'm going to be working on the second character, Ella's arc today. I do want to spend some time to review each of these arcs when I finish, but I'm not going to spend time reviewing Mix's arc yet. I'm going to wait until the end and just review all three of them right after each other. So let's get straight into working on Ella's arc from end to beginning. Okay, so rather than going through and trying to figure out every single scene completely, I'm actually repeating the strategy that I used toward the end of yesterday, which is going through and filling out all of these synopses for each of the scenes first, and then going back through for each of these scenes and breaking down whether it's a proactive or reactive scene, filling out the main three elements for the scene, and then going through and filling out the beginning, middle, end as well as adding in some of the details like tags and all that stuff. I found that one of the harder parts of doing this process is deciding what content will actually be grouped together into a single scene. By going through and figuring out what the synopsis will be for each scene, I'm making that decision, and then I can go through and figure out all the specific individual elements of each of the scenes. So I've finished from the final image to the break in the three. So now all I have to do is everything else. So I'm just going to keep going. And also one thing that I noticed from what I was doing, I got a little bit distracted on some research. I don't necessarily want to research things that are only like tangential details that are not exactly super important in some sort of extreme depth to figure them out. So I'm not going to get caught up in any of that research and that will help keep me moving efficiently during this process. <laughs> Okay, so I've been doing this for quite a while now, and I have worked my way all the way to the B story. So, I only have seven scenes left to go until I'm done with the second character's arc with Ella's arc, of course. I am getting a little bit tired, so I don't know if I need another break or what. Honestly, I didn't sleep that well last night, so that's part of the problem. I will try not to fall asleep. I'm trying to, like, keep myself awake with some music that is energetic. <laughs> So that it can give me some energy that I do not currently have and keep me at least focused enough that I'm actually doing a good job during this. And then I'll be done with plotting out every single scene in Ella's arc for the day. Ooh, and then I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished with the break in the two all the way to the opening image. I'm done for today. That was difficult. It was tiring. I am tired. I'm going to definitely have to read through this one, especially. The first one, I think I was more energetic while I was working on it, so I don't think that I had as much of a problem with focus. Um, this one, I really want to make sure that I read through and just check on every scene and make sure that they all are as good as they can be. That was really fun today, honestly. It took a long time. A long time. But it was satisfying to go through and just like make all of these different little synopses that I had for the different, you know, potential scenes into actual scenes and see the story coming together. Okay, so it is day five and I have completed two of the character arcs. I've gone through and I've outlined every single scene and now I have one more left to go. And this is Lucian's arc, the third character's arc. So I'm going to be going through today and ideally finishing this arc completely. The first thing that I need to do is go through and decide what will be the main focus for each of these scenes, look through what I've already outlined, and decide from that what sorts of scenes I'm going to need to create. Okay, so I finally finished working through the actual synopses for each of these scenes. It took a little bit longer than some of the other ones did. Because this character is present for more of like a mystery sort of story, all of the details during the fun and games weren't necessarily so worked out. It was basically like an evidence gathering period, finding various clues and whatnot. So trying to organize these things in the actual scenes was kind of difficult, which is why it took so long. But now I have finished actually creating all these synopses, and now it's time for me to go through and figure out the details for each of these scenes. <laughs>
Okay, so I have finally worked all the way to the midpoint from the very beginning. So I have finished half of these scenes so far. I need to go through and figure out the rest of them, but it is now 9.43 and it's time for me to go on my run today. It's just gonna be like 4.5 miles. I'll get back from that. I'll do my normal stuff, you know, breakfast, all that good stuff. Listen to a little bit more Blood Meridian and then I will get back to working on this more because I really want to finish this character's arc today. This mystery one is a little bit more difficult than the previous two just because the story is a little bit more complicated. So it's taking a little bit longer than the other ones but I'm still going to finish it today. I really want to. Okay, so I just finished up my break. I had my run, I had my breakfast, took a shower, and of course, I also read a little bit. So I was reading Blood Meridian. It's interesting though, because it definitely has, it has like this Old Testament sort of feel to it. Like the language used is so strong. I guess it's partially because you're talking about like this really not so nice world where people are amoral, if not borderline evil. But I do like the writing style and I definitely do like the descriptions and like the poetic sort of nature in which he describes these really graphic, gory, you know, terrible things happening. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get back into actually plotting out my own story here. I'm going to get started on the fun and games and work my way all the way back to the opening image. Okay, so I just finished the opening image all the way to the final image for this third character, Lucian. It took quite a while. It was brutal, honestly, today. It's already three o'clock. But you know what? I finished it, and now tomorrow I'm going to take some time, and I'm going to just go through and review all three of these arcs to make sure that all of the scenes actually flow from one to the other, and to make sure that all the scenes actually make sense and that they are ready to be written. So I'm very excited about getting this far in the process, and I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do when I'm actually writing this story. One more little note. I'm here, you know, at this wall again. And in a previous video, I had said that I was thinking of creating a mural here. Well, don't worry, I have not forgotten about that. And also, I have started planning out what I actually want to include in the mural. I have this little app on my phone that you can kind of like draw with, with your finger. It's not ideal for drawing, that's for sure. But I've been using it to kind of sketch out what I think the mural will look like. And I'm going to be combining like some quotes with some cartoonish sorts of images and just, you know, have a nice light feel to it. I'm just going to do black and white because I think it looks pretty cool that way. And also that way I don't have to buy so many colors. <laughs> Let's be real. That's also a great reason. So that is my little update on that. I'm going to maybe draw a little bit of that if I have time later tonight. I'll actually draw on paper. So anyway, I have finished outlining every scene in all three character arcs. Tomorrow I'm going to take some time to review them, but otherwise, these three character arcs are done, and I'm ready to write this story. Okay, so as I said before, I'm going to get started on the mural, the design for the mural at least. So I am going to draw it right here. There's my paper. I have this huge pad. I don't have any other paper right now. As you might remember, I used my last two sheets of normal white paper on the map. So I'm just going to try and map it out here a little bit and see what I can do. Okay, so I at least got started here. I think the design is coming together. I kind of had an idea of what it would look like, but since I did it on my phone, and since I also did it with a square canvas on my phone, it's not really the same thing as the rectangular shape that I'm planning on actually creating. So I'm trying to map it out here. I think I might actually have enough space for an extra item or something that I wasn't planning on putting. So I'm not sure what I'm going to put there, but I guess we'll find out. So I have a little, you know, Tory gate classic me. I have this book that kind of looks a little bit like a journal, but <laughs> hopefully I can make it look more like a book. There's Mount Fuji without shading. 
and that's like the framework of a uh, sakura tree but there will also be my computer and typing hands here although i might not be able to do the hands because i'm planning on doing this like relatively cartoonish so it doesn't really make sense to add like a ton of detailed lines that really aren't going to be included my problem is that i naturally try to draw things realistically <laughs> anyway we'll see what i can do but that's where I got to for now. Maybe I'll show my progress in a future video when I keep working on it or whatever. So I will see you tomorrow with the actual overview of all of the scenes looking through, making sure, fixing any problems that exist, and then finishing this process and being able to get started on writing the book. Okay, so as I said yesterday, today I'm going to be reviewing each of the outlines that I've created for each of these characters, and I'm going to read them from front to back this time and make sure that everything flows together naturally, that it seems like it makes sense, the order of events, as well as that the events are connecting to other events in the future. And if I find any problems here, if I see that any scenes are lacking or that they just don't really make sense in the context of this character's arc right there, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that scene and adjust it to make it better. Okay, so I just worked my way through reviewing the entire first character's arc. There were a few things I had to change, two scenes that I had to add slash replace, but otherwise it seemed to flow really well together. So that one is done and now this time we move on to the second character, Ella's arc. Okay, so I just finished up with Ella's arc with going through all of these scenes in order and making sure that they actually all, you know, flow together naturally. I do think that these flow together very well, and all of these scenes were already in a better state, so I didn't really have to change up anything. There were a few places where I forgot to actually put the beginning, middle, end, but other than that, there wasn't really much to do. It actually flowed together well, and I'm very excited to write this character's story in just a bit. Now let's move on to Lucian's arc, the third character. This is potentially the most complicated and will potentially have the most changes that I'm going to need to make among the three. Okay, so I just finished going through the third character's arc. This one as well was already pretty clean, so I didn't really have to do anything. And actually, I didn't even have to add any, you know, beginning, middle, and end that I forgot to put because yesterday I was pretty vigilant about not forgetting that. Okay, so where does that actually leave me with this story and writing the novel? First of all, I realized while doing this process that there are a few things I still do need to figure out. For example, it might be useful to know the layout of the Imperial Palace, especially considering that the story taking place there is basically a mystery, so it might be useful for me to know that. I also do need to figure out a few names of things still, like for instance, I never named the town that Ella is from, and I never named the neighboring town that she ends up going to at a certain point. No spoilers included. So I need to name both of those, but those things are relatively easy to do. By far the most difficult thing that I still have to do that I just realized that I need to do is come up with this sort of puzzle that is included as part of the mystery. So for me at least, in mystery stories, I really like if there's some sort of puzzle or some sort of code that needs to be broken or something like that. So I've kind of worked that into this story as well, and it ends up being really important for the investigation. So I do need to actually design this puzzle and make it so that there are various little things that can be found out about it that don't necessarily give away the full thing and that keep it a mystery. So I do have to do that. So I might make a video next where I take care of all this like odds and ends stuff before I start writing the first draft. For now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect on this experience a little bit and see if I can derive any sort of lessons learned from this experience and share those lessons with you. After taking some time to reflect on this process, there was one major lesson that I took away from doing this. Don't confuse synopses with actual scenes. What I mean by this is that basically when I was doing this process and I was going through and outlining the story in the more general way, just going through each of the Save the Cat beats, 
and writing down a little bit about what is going to happen there. I felt like I'd done a really thorough job with this and really figured out what's going to happen, especially with some of the longer beats, for instance, the fun and games or the bad guys close in. And if you're not super familiar with Save the Cat, that's basically most of the second act. So that's what I'm talking about. For this part of the story, I'd written a bunch of bullet points about specific things that I thought were going to happen. And when I looked over that, when I would review this, it all seemed to make sense. It all seemed to connect so smoothly. However, when I was trying to map these bullet points over to becoming actual scenes, I realized that this connection that I thought they had was really just an emotional illusion in my own mind. Because sure, there were some that were really connected. There were some that were easily connected, but there were also some that did not have a connection that did not flow from one to the other naturally. And I think this is actually a benefit of outlining to the degree that I did of outlining individual scenes, because by outlining the individual scenes, figuring out the beginning, the middle, the end, the character's goal, the conflict in the scene, what is getting in the way of that goal, and then the outcome, what is going to happen at the end of the scene, you end up forcing yourself to be concrete about how the scenes will connect from one to the other. And by knowing this information, I know that it's going to make the writing process easier for me because imagine if I hadn't done that and if instead I just had these bullet points and I'm trying to think about a scene that I'm going to write and now I have to spend all this time thinking about, wait a second, those two things don't really seem to connect. How am I going to make them connect? And that's where you run into those moments where you're sitting at the computer watching the empty page and the cursor just blinking over and over again and nothing is coming out. It also leads to some of the moments I experienced when I was writing the previous first draft experience. And I do want to talk about what I'm going to be doing with that novel in a future video. But during that process, when I was writing that first draft, I noticed that sometimes I would be writing a scene and I would realize that this scene is not going in the right direction at all. This scene is completely going in the wrong direction. And I think this is because of the more general idea about what was going to happen and the connections between scenes. I didn't know what was going to happen, so I would focus on certain parts of what was going to happen, thinking that they were more important than they were. And then I'd end up having to cut all of that and rewrite the scene so that it would actually flow to the next scene. All of that to say, do not confuse a synopsis with a scene. The connections may or may not actually exist between various points in the synopsis. And if you are a writer who likes outlining, if you're a writer who likes being relatively detailed about your outlines before you start writing the story, then maybe you want to give this a try of outlining every single scene just to make sure that you are really genuinely forming those connections between scenes and that it actually does line up, that you're not just imagining that it lines up in your mind. But if that's not the way you write, if you do not do this very specific outlining process, maybe you don't even outline at all, that's cool too. And that makes me wonder, what is your process like before writing a book? Do you do an outline? Do you go this deep into your outlines like I have gone? Do you not even outline at all? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button so that YouTube knows to share with other writers like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. La da 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 da. It's the beep. And now I have one. One. Okay. So... <clears throat> it's been a while since I've been on camera. Peace. What's going on? Okay. Anyway. <laughs>